Well, let's explore the side, side, side congruence postulate. And, well, you can read that on your own time, but I've got three segments here. I'm going to call them the red, the green, the blue. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this segment AB. I'm going to take the red segment. And I'm going to attach to it a green segment. Okay. And to that, I'll attach on the other end a blue. Now, side, side, side tells me that there is only one way I can make a triangle out of this. That's a unique triangle. Of course, I could have probably had them meet down here. But you see, that's actually the same triangle, just a reflection of the other one. So, if maybe if I have DE, I do the same thing. And if I'm limited to these two segments, or these three segments, that is, these two triangles must be congruent because they're made out of the same components. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Let's look at it this way. I'm going to take triangle A and triangle B, which are made, out, again, out of these same pieces. And if I vary them, they might look a little different. But I'm beginning to think these triangles are exactly the same. If I were to take this one triangle, maybe I'll move triangle B over here, and, and I'm going to take triangle A from here, down here, and if I were to rotate it, let's see, I get the exact fit, because after all, these two triangles are congruent. They're congruent by our postulate called side, side, side. Well, let's see if these two triangles are congruent. And of course, we're going to be using the side, side, side congruence postulate. Well, uh, again, I'm talking about these two triangles. Clearly, you can see that one triangle is a reflection of the other. And it seems that we have three pairs of congruent sides, so that should work out okay. Except um, I'm going to say no. And the reason you're going to have to pay attention carefully, watch again the movement. And I can say that RST, the R corresponds to the Q, the S corresponds to the P, and the T, of course, stays put. So you need to get those vertices in the right order. Well, let's try another one. I've got two triangles here. I'm looking for that side, side, side congruence. So I'm going to look at this particular triangle. This is my ABC, and I know that it rotates this way. So I would describe this as a rotation. And let's see here. When I rotate this triangle, the A rotates over or maps to the C. Going back here, look at the B. It's going to rotate over to D, the second letters. And finally, the D on this triangle is going to rotate back over the B. So ABD is congruent. To CDB by side, side, side. So my answer very simply will be yes. Well, I'm looking for another side, side, side congruence. I see one pair of congruent sides, two pairs of congruent sides. Of course, we do have a third pair, that is, both triangles use this side, FD. Therefore, we're going to say FD is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. One, two, three. I see three pairs of congruent sides, so clearly we have congruent triangles. Check to see if they're in the right order. Well, I'm going to look at this one, and I know it's going to reflect, so it's going to be a reflection. I look over here, and I'm looking at DEF, and that corresponds to DGF. I'm looking at that, and it's. I say, yeah, that's all right. So I'm going to say yes by side, side, side. One last note. Let's be clear. The reflexive property tells me that this side is congruent to itself. A reflection is a different thing. That's any figure that's flipped over an axis. This happens to be the axis. Do not confuse these two. This triangle is not con congruent, or these triangles are not congruent by reflection. They're congruent by side, side, side. They happen to be reflections of each other. 
Let's check these two triangles for congruence using side, side, side postulate. Well, let's see, AB is congruent to DE as both their measures are equal to six, whatever those units are. And by the same argument, BC is congruent to EF. However, I'm looking here and I'm, I'm having a problem with DF. If this segment, if DC is three, then DF is X plus three. And if AF is two, then CA is X plus two. And therefore, they are not congruent. So these are not going to be congruent triangles. We can demonstrate this as well by, let's say I rotate this figure this way. And then if I were just to take it and slide it over, like this, I said, I can see that this triangle is not the same shape as ABC. So it doesn't work. And right away I can see visually, regardless of how long that segment FC, that's the unknown, I can vary that and these two triangles are still not going to be the same. So looks like this one fails. Well, here we go. We've got some measurements on this figure. Let's see what we can come up with for congruent triangles. I've got two segments right there. AB congruent to FE. Well, since they have the same measure, that measure is four. Now this one is more interesting. I've got BC. This segment is X. So BC has a length of X plus one. And ED also has a length of X plus one. So by segment addition, they are congruent. And finally, these two have a measure of five, so they are congruent. However, you gotta pay attention. We were asked if ABC was congruent to DEF. It is not, because ABC corresponds to FED, that is triangle FED, by the side, side, side postulate. And if I looked at it, I could visually see, I could rotate the figure like that. See, aha, nice rotation. And it looks, one more thing, it looks like right triangles, but you know, they don't have to be. The X there is an unknown. The triangles could look like this, or for that matter, they could look like this. We don't know how long that unknown segment is. But in any event, we've got two congruent triangles, ABC congruent to triangle FED. Well, here is a challenge problem. It says so right there. We're going to try to find all the values of x. We've got some algebra in store here to make the triangles congruent. Notice it doesn't give you the order, so you've got to figure out different ways that you could make them congruent. Well, one thing is this sign has to be congruent to itself. So I see two ways to make these triangles congruent. Let's go with case one. Watch the tick marks. If I make these two triangles congruent, I'm saying it's a reflection. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC. If I do that, I've got to set 5x equal to 4x plus 3. When I do that, x is 3. However, 5x minus 2 must also equal 3x plus 10. When I set that equal, I get 6. Well, this can't really be because x has to be 3 up here and it has to be six down here. So I'm not buying this. This case number one, triangle ABC, cannot be congruent to triangle DBC. So I'm gonna take that one. I'm just gonna put a big X. I'm gonna say, no, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So let's look at, let's clear these segments off here and let's set up the other scenario. I could have a rotation whereby this segment AB is congruent to CD and whereby AC is congruent to BD. So again, triangle ABC would be congruent to triangle, say this three times fast, DCB. That would be a rotation. And if I do that, I'm going to set 5x equal to 3x plus 10 solve for x, x is 5. And also 5x minus 2 must be set equal to 4x plus 3, x equals 5. This one checks out okay because after all the value of x 
5 satisfies both of those conditions, and that would be necessary to make these two triangles congruent. So that's what you've got. You've got these two triangles. They are rotations of each other. That would make the two triangles congruent.